Welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest, smallest missing non-negative integer after operations. The problem states that you are given an array nums and an integer value. You can add or subtract value from any elements from the nums. For example, let's say if nums is 1 to 3 and value is 2. You can add 2 to any of its integer or you can subtract 2 from any of the integers. And you can do this as many times as you want. So for example, you can convert this 2 to 6. Basically add 2 twice. You can convert this 2 to minus 4 or subtract 2 3 times. So this is the operation that you can perform any number of times on and in any of the elements. Now you need to return the max of the array. What is max? Max is the smallest missing non-negative integer. So for example, max of minus 1, 2, 3 is 0 because 0 is the non-negative integer and it is not present in the array. Right? So it is the smallest non-negative integer which is not present in the array. Similarly, the max of 0, 1, 3 is 2. So the smallest integer is 0. So 0 is present and then 1. So 1 is present. Then 2. 2 is not present. So that's where the 2 is the smallest integer which is not present in the array. And hence 2 is the max of this array. Right? Now you need to return the maximum max possible. So you can apply this operation in any fashion as you want. You need to return the maximum max possible for the given array. So let's take an example. Let's say this is the array and the value is 5. So basically you can add or subtract 5 from any of the elements of the array. So what they have done, they have added 5 twice in this uh, second integer. They have subtracted 5 once from the second, uh, from this uh, third integer and then they have subtracted 5 twice from the fourth integer. So the final array would look something like 1, 0, 2, 3, 6, 8. And the max of this array is 4. So you can apply any other operation you will not be able to convert this array to something which have a max of greater than 4 and hence 4 is the answer right so how to solve this so first of all before proceeding to the prob uh, problem solution i would say this problem is much much easier because of the constraint that you can add or subtract you can both add or subtract right but this problem would become very difficult if one of the you you are not allowed to do one of the operation let's say you are allowed to only subtract or you are allowed to only add so that i would strongly encourage you to solve that part of the that version of the problem as well so we will discuss both the version of the problem in this video so stay tuned to the very end and i'm sure you will enjoy the solution so with that let's get started now let's say v is equals to 5 and this is the array right now it is given that you can add or subtract 5 from any of the elements at any number of times you want, right? So first approach, like you might think that, okay, uh, we need to convert this array to something like this to get the actual max, but, but it is not required. The reason being, you know that you can add or subtract five. So basically you can make any X that is of the form value cross quotient plus remainder, right? So for example, what is the remainder of seven with five? Two, right? So basically you can make any number, like you can make any number which give remainder of two when we modulus it with five, right? So that's the meaning of this uh, uh, exp uh, expression. So Similarly, minus 10. So basically, minus 10 would mean that if you take minus 10 modulus 5, so I hope you understand what uh, a negative number modulus a positive number means. So basically, uh, we will, for a negative number, we'll just keep on adding 5 until it become positive number and it will surely be less than 5 because we are adding 5 just to make it positive. So if you take the modulus of minus 10 with 5, it will come as 0. So what does this mean? It means you can form anything which gives modulus 0 when divided by 5, right? So let's just prepare a list like this. So we have a value 5. So the possible value of remainder could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Now, how many of these integers can give 0? So uh, 5 will give 0, right? Minus 10 will give 0. We've seen that nothing else. So basically there are two integers which can give 0 when modulus with 5. 
So now let's try to do for one. So one will give modulus of one when when uh, divided by five. Six will give modulus of one, right? So there are again two integers which can give modulus of one. What about two? Seven will give two, right? And uh, what else? So that's it, right? So seven seven is the only thing that will give two. So there are one integer. There's one integer which can give modulus of two. Now what about three? Eight will give three, right? Uh, eight will give three, and thirteen will give three. So these are the three integers which can give modulus of three. Now what about four? Uh, only fourteen can give four. So uh, there's one integer which can give uh, modulus of four with five. Now once you have this array prepared, now only thing that you need to focus is what is the max so you can forget about the array now think about what is the max so what 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 the definition of max max is the smallest non negative integer so you will start with zero so is zero present in the array or not the answer would be look at the modulus zero if there is a number which gives you modulus zero then it is sure that zero is present in the array right so because there is a number which can give modulus zero it means zero is present in the array now it doesn't matter whether the number is greater than zero or less than zero because you are allowed to do add or subtract both right so let's say uh, this was the array right now you can take this 5 as well as you can take this 10 both will give zero it doesn't matter which one you take right so that's what we are doing we have said that okay we know that there are two integers which can which are capable of giving zero and any multiples of zero so that's where we we said that okay zero is present in the array and we will subtract one from here because we have we have used one element to make zero right now the next smallest integer is one so is one present again look at the modulus of one with five it is one right so basically with what we are looking at we are looking at any number that can give modulus of 1 with 5 so there are two such integers so again we will just subtract one from here and we'll say okay we we got we got one integer which can give modulus of 1 when divided by 5 now next integer is 2 again 2 will do same thing 2 modulus 5 is 2 so we'll look at here there is one integer which can give 2 so that's fine we will just make it 0 and we say that okay 2 is possible now comes 3 so again 3 modulus 5 is 3 so there are integers so we'll just uh, decrement and 3 is possible go forward so 4 same thing there is an integer so uh, just decrement and go forward now 5 this is interesting so basically it says that can we get 5 again to get 5 we can get 5 from anything that gives modulus of 0 because 5 modulus 5 is 0 right so we can get 5 from anything that gives modulus of 0 so there is one integer which can give modulus of 0 so basically we can get 5 so we'll just decrement it to 0 and say that we can get 5 now the next integer is 6 again to get 6 we can get 6 from anything that can give a modulus of 1 because uh, 6 modulus 5 is 1 so we can get 6 from anything that has modulus of 1 so there is one integer which can give modulus of 1 remaining so we'll make it 0 and we'll say okay 6 is possible now 7 again to get 7 the same logic you have to be there have to be an integer which gives modulus of 2 but there is no such integer so that's where 7 is the answer right so hope you got the algorithm now what is the time complexity of this entire solution first you are preparing this array preparation of this array would take order and time you will just do modulus and fill up the array right second you are iterating over the max one by one right now what is the possible value of max possible value of max could be the size of the array right because the definition of max is the number should be present in the array right and the, if the size of the array is n then i am very sure that the maximum value of max could be n because it the array in the best case array would contain everything from 0 to n minus 1 right so if the size of the array is n then the maximum value of max could be n so we will keep on doing this until n times right so the complexity of this entire algorithm is order n where n is the size of the given array which is 10 to the power 5 and that would surely pass right so i am not showing you showing you the pseudo code for this version of the problem 
I would strongly, strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and try to code the solution yourself. Okay, hope you have tried the solution yourself at least uh, once. So the code would look something like this. What we are doing, we are just preparing this uh, array of remainders. And uh, how we are doing it, if i is less than zero, then we are making it positive by just keep by, by just uh, repeatedly adding value to it. So this is the way where we calculate the modulus of a negative 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 integer, right? And after that, we will just increment the i modulus value index of the remainder, right? Now after that, we start with zero. We will keep on doing, we'll keep on iterating until we get this uh, condition. So basically, if we hit a if we hit a value where result modulus value total number of integers which have this remainder is zero, then we will re simply return result. Otherwise, we know that there is an integer which can give us this remainder. We'll just decrement the, that particular remainder and increment the result. Basically, we'll try the next possible mix, right? After this loop ends, we will return like this. We, we are very sure that we will be returning something from here. So that's why I've written minus one here. Basically, we'll never reach here at all, right? So hope the entire solution makes sense. Now, now is the time for an interesting problem. So the problem is here you are allowed to do add or subtract both, right? Now is the time where we say that, okay, we are not allowed to subtract. Sorry, we are not allowed to add, let's say. The, the version of the problem where we are not allowed to subtract will be very similar. So you can try the exercise, but let's say you are not allowed to subtract, uh, you are not allowed to add at all. So you can already subtract value from the nums, right? Now you have to solve the exact same problem. You have to find the maximum mix of the given array. How would you approach it? Again, uh, I would strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and try to think this yourself first before uh, seeing the solution. So until then, let me clear this space, right? So hope you have thought about it. Now, what exactly is the difference here? The difference or why exactly you can't apply the same approach here? You can't apply the same approach because Previously, you are maintaining an array of remainders. So you, you maintain an array where you say that, okay, uh, there are X elements which have remainder zero. There are X two elements which have remainder one and so on and so forth, right? So now you in a way lost the fact that you, you are able to do this because you know you can add or subtract anything from here. So you don't need to maintain what as, what is the exact value here, right? But here, that would not be the case. So for example, in this particular case, uh, let's say we are only allowed to do subtract. So in this case, the answer for this will be zero because, uh, sorry, answer like you, you can't use minus 10 for making zero. Previously, we are able to, able to do minus 10, able to use minus 10 as well for making zero, but now we can only use five to make zero. So the let's let's try to find out the max. Max would be we will use five to make zero. So we will convert this five to zero. One would be one. We will convert this seven to two. We will convert this eight to three. We will convert this fourteen to four. Minus ten we can't do anything. We will convert this six uh, to one. But we want five, and there is no way you can get five. So the max would be five, right? So notice that in the previous version where we are allowed to both add or subtract, the answer for exact same problem was eight. Uh, but here, because we are not allowed to do add, the answer changes, right? So hope you get uh, the intuition that the solution for the previous one would not work here. And the reason for that is we, while keeping the value, we lost track of how much we like, how much the value is. So basically we can't actually add something to here and that's what we need to keep track of as well, right? So I think uh, that also gives a path to solve the problem. So basically we need to keep track of what is the exact value along with the remainders, right? So let's just uh, maintain this table. So what we are doing, we are keeping track of the values along with remainder. So this is the remainder column, right? And these are the values which can give this remainder. So basically we are saying that zero We'll get zero from five and 10. 
so let's say this is plus 10 for example because in this particular version we, we have to simply ignore minus uh, like negative numbers because we can't do anything with that negative numbers right so that's where let's ignore negative numbers at all and let's say uh, this minus 10 is plus 10 now uh, we maintain this array we maintain this table uh, 0 we can get 0 from 5 and 10 right we can get 1 from 1 and 6 2 from 7 3 point 3 from 8 and 13 and 4 from 14 right now let's say we you, you want to calculate max so you will start with 0 right you will say okay is 0 a possible max so you will the answer for this would again depend on how many numbers are there which have 0 right so there are two numbers 5 and 10 now you can't simply say that okay there are two numbers i will subtract one and move forward because it in this case now it matters among 5 and 10 which one you choose because let's say you have chosen 10 for for this zero so it might happen in the future that you require 10 actually you actually require 10 but because you have used 10 already this would not uh, this like this would uh, not actually help you for like for example let's say in this case uh, let's say you use you 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 want to check one right now for one you have two choices one and six right let's say you choose six to make this one right now if you choose may if you choose six to make this one now there will be a time let's say you have to check six so um, basically you can assume that all of these are present right and now is the time to check six so two, we can see that we can't make six at all because we are only allowed to subtract and we will subtract from these set of integers only because we know that this is the remainder that we want at the end so we will be subtracting from these set of integers but there is only one integer present which is one and we are not allowed to add at all so we will say that okay we are stuck at six we can't make six so six is the mix but let's say if you have chosen, chosen uh, if you have chosen one for making this one so while to while making this one you have chosen one instead of six in that case now you can consider this six for this six right so hope you got the uh, got, got the intuition that here not only the actual value matters it is also it also matters that which number you are pairing up with what uh, like with to form which number so let's say you want to uh, check some number x so it matters which of these set of integers you pair up with x right so that's the problem we need to now answer so we need to now answer if we have to pair up some x which of these integers we have to consider right so think about it for a moment i would encourage you to pause again and think about it so the answer is we will always choose the one which is the smallest possible so why that's the case because we know that if we choose something greater we have already seen that if we choose something greater it might block something afterwards right so what we will do for every max we will look at the list and choose the first one which is greater than the uh, greater than the current number that we are searching for so for example uh, let's say we we are again trying the same algorithm we will say okay whether 0 is present or not so we will look at 0 list we will say okay 5 and 10 is there now among 5 and 10 i will choose 5 because 5 is the first number that is just greater than 0 right so i will choose 5 i will remove 5 and we will say okay 5 0 is present now i will check 1 again for 1 i will look at the list of 1 there are two integers i will select the one which is just greater so i will select this one first right because this is just just the i will be able to make one from this one so that uh, i will say i will remove this one and say that one is present now for two again same thing we'll look at this list there is only one so we have to take this so just take this for three look at this list 
select the first one which is just greater than three, greater than equals to three. So here again, eight is the first one which is greater than equals to three. Remove this eight and say that three is done. Now four, there is only one thing, so we have to remove this and say four is done. Now five, again for five we will look at this list. Say which is the first one which is greater than five. So here ten is the first one, so you remove ten and say five is done. So for six again the same thing. Six is the first one which can do the job. So we'll just remove six and say six is done. Now seven we will look at this uh, list. This list is empty. There's nothing here. Let's say there would have been something. Let's say there's one more, uh, like there's, uh, there is a eight or let's say six here or something else. Even then we would not see, will not get the actual value because what we want is something which is greater than or equal to seven, right? And if that number is not present, we will ignore that. So that's where the answer in this case would be seven, right? So hope you got the intuition. What we are doing, we are maintaining a list and in this list, we want to perform two kind of operation. The first operation is find me the number which is just greater than a given number X. So this is like uh, similar to lower bound uh, in most of the libraries. So we are, we are finding the lower bound for X. So whatever data structure we will use to store this list should be able to give lower bound efficiently. And second, that data structure should be able to remove an element efficiently, right? Now you can think about this and uh, the data structure which we will use, which can give, which can do both the things efficiently. And the answer is any balanced binary search tree. So in C++ it is uh, represented as set, so set uses red black tree. So any binary, balanced binary search tree would be able to give you lower bound in order log n time and it is also uh, it also can remove the remove any element in order log n time. So that's what we want. We want find lower bound in log n, and we also want to remove an element in log n. Now notice that you can't implement this remove in order n because if you implement this remove in order n, this entire like this entire time would jump from order n to order n square, right? So that's where we we, we have to use set here, and the complexity would be n log n. Now this n is coming from this iteration over the max, right? And this login is coming from this uh, uh, operation on this list. So at, for every for every integer or for every max, we will be doing a lower bound and then we will be removing from the list. So we basically we are doing two login operations for every uh, possible max that we are trying to consider. And uh, for this. Uh, like this is the final complexity. Now I would encourage you to pause the video again and try to code the solution yourself before looking at the solution. Again, there are multiple ways to code the solution uh, as well. Like there is one way where you can code the solution in order n itself. So if you are further interested or if you want to explore other algorithms as well, I would encourage you to try this, uh, try to solve the same problem in order n time. And a hint for that would be you can apply like you, you don't need to apply lower bound anyway because you can simply iterate over this. So it is very similar to the two pointer approach. Basically, we will always be we will always want something which is greater than the previous thing. So if let's say we are we have queried the list for five, next time we will query the list for something greater than five, right? So it is strictly increasing. That's the hint. You can think about it yourself. But for now, we will be implementing the order n log n solution. So let's look at the code. The code is uh, similar to the previous one. So what we have done, we have used multi set because uh, there can be like one element. There can be one, more than one element with the same value. So uh, see, there are two eights here, right? So that's why we use multi set. And uh, what we have done, if if, it, if i is less than zero, we'll just continue because we know it is not. If it is not of any use for us. Otherwise, we will just uh, insert it into the uh, particular remainder slot. After that, we will iterate over the max and see one by one whether it is present or not. So we will just uh, for for uh, for checking whether it is present or not, we will just find out the remainder as previously we have done, and then we will look at the lower bound. 
if there is no lower bound found right if it is dot end then we will return false otherwise we will return true and also erase that particular uh, index so once you do this uh, you the final result would contain the first non negative integer which is not present or which we are not able to make from the given uh, set of integers right so hope you enjoyed the solution again uh, if you like to uh, like if you like to explore the two pointer approach or if you like to understand the two pointers a bit more this is a very very nice problem to solve you can try to code this entire solution in order and time um, by yourself if you need any help or if you want me to look at your code uh, feel free to post that in the comment section below and we can discuss so hope you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you're not already i will see you in the next one thank you